creating memorable video conference experiences. Your desk becomes your stage, gathering new clients and assets without leaving your office, home, or cottage. Once again, this is the Rare Advisor. Uh, we are here to talk about a business model that is supercharged by repeatable and recurring events. My name is Mike Walters, CEO of USA Financial. I'm joined once again by Mark Mersman, the Chief Marketing Officer at USA Financial, who is very well versed on what I would call all of the digital tools that you need to have in your arsenal in order to create an experience for consumers, not just during a pandemic, but also well into the future, because so many of the things that are going on today are going to continue uh, in a post-pandemic environment. And so all of this just adds horsepower to your business model. Mark, today, what I'd love to talk about is, is creating a memorable experience with your video conferencing whether that's individually, whether that's group. I mean, it's kind of a, a, a wide open category. I'll let you run in whatever direction you would like. Uh, but we're, we're learning very quickly. There are certain things you can do to kind of bring things to life when you're doing these video conferences, as opposed to, you know, the old traditional phone call. And then, and then, you know, if you can or cannot meet face to face, but this is also great if you're dealing with clients long distance, maybe they travel for the winter, whatever the case might be. So there's a million directions to go with this. Uh, and it's finally getting the attention it deserves because there's been so much going on with the pandemic that oh, yeah. people, are, people are now learning how to use this and the consumers have learned how to use this. That's the real key. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if the, necessarily the airline slash travel industry loves <laughs> what's happening, but I mean, the reality is I do think the video conferencing thing is going to be here to stay. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly we'll bring, you know, bring back the one on one face to face type of meetings. You know, that's that's going to be a part of our, our everyday existence. But I think this will hopefully be something that is is able to be leveraged by advisors moving forward. You know, you, you think about all the advantages that you actually get through video conferencing. I mean, there's there's a ton, but I, I think the most important part is making sure that you're you're following some of the basics. Um, matter of fact, anybody watching this probably just noticed that you took a drink of water yep. and when you did it, you muted yourself. So it's a, a really simple thing, but at the end of the day when you're doing these conferences, you don't you know you don't want to hear somebody eating or, or drinking on the other end if you can, you know, just get familiar with where that mute button is so that if you're going to have a coughing attack or, <laughs> or sneeze and you can catch yourself in advance, you know, to hit it. Right. Um, it's simple, but it is something that to start to think about, you know, what can we do to create a real experience for clients? And, you know, the the thing is, is that People are always going to be when they when they do these calls, they are going to be looking not just at you, but they are going to be looking around you. So you got to think about your background environment. Yep. Um, you know, as I look at my environment versus yours, yours is actually more visually intriguing right now. There's probably a little bit more to it. And so I'll you yep. know, naturally, I'm going to kind of gravitate. Oh, you got a picture up there, right. you know, and, and sometimes you can be very strategic about things that you place on camera because right. it might be something that could trigger a conversation with that client or prospective client if if they can see certain things. So a lot of that stuff, making sure that your camera is positioned properly. Um, you know, the the one thing I was I was reading the other day, um, and I forget where I saw it or what exactly it was referring to, but it was referencing the fact that crotch cam is not sexy. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole idea of, you know, that camera being way down yeah. here and kind of coming up at Shooting you. Up at, your nose. Yes. <laughs> just an awful angle. Right. Um, you know, and, and <laughs> you know, most of the time I think advisors would intuitively know that, but, you know, just something simple so that, you know, keep myself, my head centered in yeah. about the top third of the, of the screen so that you're looking at it. Um, I think, you know, making sure that background is professional, understand, you know, that if it's a completely messy environment behind you, that's going to be a reflection of potentially the type of work that you do. Yeah. Um, this is your stage, right? So if a client was coming into your office for a one-on-one -on -one appointment, 
you would put thought into where they would sit, what room you're going to use. Is it your conference room? Is it your actual office? And so on. And whichever room they're coming into, you're going to stage it appropriately. Uh, I mean, and, you know, a lot of people aren't going over the top, but you want it to look nice. You know, you want to have things prepared, uh, so on and so forth. This works the same way. So, for example, you know, we've been dealing with this for quite some time in, two to, uh, in 2020 here. Uh, I've actually taken, now I happen to be in my home right now, but I have actually taken my office uh, back in our building and I have reversed it. So I used to sit and I had windows behind me. Uh, and then on the other side, I had a whiteboard and kind of some woodwork and all this other stuff going on. Well, as it turns out, you know, what worked well face to face did not work well digitally, uh, or through video conferencing at all, because the, the windows were kind of screwing up all the light and everything else. So I've just have reversed everything. And honestly, my office is better for everything that way. But I think today it's really kind of interesting. Now you're really setting up your space based upon what's going to be seen on the video and how well can the camera capture you, which then gets into a lighting discussion and so on. But the beauty of this is literally for like a hundred to $150 or less, you can get yourself a high quality uh, digital camera that just kind of mounts on top of your normal uh, laptop or computer screen. You can get a, a microphone that plugs in uh, that will that will literally you know kind of elevate the sound uh, immensely compared to what you get on a normal microphone off your laptop or whatever. And then you can get some lighting if you need to. They, they've got these little lights that you know you can kind of push toward push the light your direction uh, without yeah. shining off your head and all these other things. I think that's that's probably one of the big ones, and it was the reason why you had made that change because right. a lot of people might have lighting coming from behind them. And that's, I mean, that's kind of a throwback to the Hitchcock movies, you know, right. it great, you know, makes yeah. great horror flicks and that sort of thing, but you want to have the light coming in from the front um, ideally. And, you know, hopefully it's a little diffused to, to help with that shininess factor. Right. Um, I think another thing that a lot of people have to realize is they forget to smile on these things. Yeah. And cause it's super easy, like in person, you naturally will have a lot more, you know, interaction yeah. and smile. And especially when you're meeting with people one-on-one -on -one versus these, it, you know, it's easy to kind of mean mug people a little bit unintentionally. Yeah. And, you know, you, you want to be sensitive to that and try to, you know, I know a lot of people will have little sticky notes by their camera that says smile and yeah. just as a little reminder so that, you know, cause you're, we have a tendency on video conferencing to kind of almost look angry yeah. Um, and if you ever see, you know, big meetings and you watch the the tiles of, you know, 15, 20, 30 people, there are very few that are smiling. They're all kind of yeah. sitting there from and, you know, so be cognizant of that, whether it's a, a group session that you're holding or a one on one. Um, I think it's it's something super important. Yeah. Another one. Um, and this is actually something that I've recently been looking into because I have two big dogs at home. And it, it never fails for me that I'll have an important video call and there's a delivery at my house when I'm working from home and right. the dogs start going crazy. And you'd think that I've got Rottweilers eating a mailman <laughs> when you hear it. But um, there is a tool out there that you can plug into. It's called crisp.ai. It's K-R-I-S-P. Hmm. This will, it's basically a plug in to, I think it's into your browser that will diffuse and eliminate all background noise. So it will kill the dogs, you know, not kill the dogs, it will kill their barking. Um, <laughs> and in kids that might be screaming in your in your background, right. or if you're working in a coffee shop or a public place and you're you're doing a video call or something like that, same kind of thing. It can kill out some of the background noise. So if you happen to be in a in a noisy environment, be sensitive to that sort of thing. And that might be there there is a small charge associated with it. But if, if you're routinely making those calls and, right. you know, I think that's the sort of thing, especially if, if you're presenting, it can be really distracting if all of a sudden there's, there's a bunch of noise in the background. Yeah. And the other thing you can do as well, especially if you're in an environment where that wouldn't work. So let's say if you, if you share your office and, and, too many people are too close together. Uh, you can get the headsets. Now, neither of us happen to have one on today because of the way we're structured, but you can have the headset with the microphone kind of coming along the side. And then you can get those what's called noise canceling. 
And yep. so that will push away and kind of keep out a lot of the noise other than your actual voice. Uh, and then obviously having the headset over your ears allows it to be easier for you to listen uh, to the person on the other end, even if there's a lot of chatter going on around you. So that, that's a good one. The other thing I would just mention before we get too far away from these types of, uh, of uh, I guess you would call them just mechanical issues. Um, the other thing that I would say is make sure that the camera that you're using is stationed above the person you're talking to. So in other words, I don't want to be talking over here and yet the camera is here. I want to make sure that I'm talking into the camera. Uh, now, you don't have to necessarily look up at the camera because I'm looking at the person I'm talking to, but it at least brings your eyes in where they should be. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, you can just slide the camera around or there's a lot of different ways to handle that. Uh, but you want to make sure that that lines up. So many people I'll, I'll have conferences with today. And they'll be like looking over here the whole time they're talking to me. And again, imagine if this was, if we were sitting face to face in the room together, well, I would never do that to you. Right. But yet somehow some people think that that's okay on video. Well, you know, as you this give thing the appearance long, that you're checking your email rather than focusing on them when right. in reality you are focusing on them. They just feel yeah. the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Camera and the screen are just in the wrong spot. So yeah. So just take yeah. a minute, line stuff up. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. And another one, I, you know, I think we should talk about dress. Um, you know, uh, when we first started doing more and more of these, we were really focused on, all right, dr dress to impress. So, we, you know, we might suit up. But I think that there's kind of been a general consensus that, you know, you can you still want to dress professionally, but you can dress down a little. Um, yeah. You know, oftentimes I don't think you need to have the, the full on suit. Now, certainly if that you know, is, is in your comfort zone, you, you certainly can do that. I think that there's just a, a matter of finding the right happy medium between, you know, the, I'm about to go work out look and the, you know, I'm going to dress for a, a live presentation type of look. So yeah, I, I think you've got to think through that, you know, depending on your area and who your clientele is. But I think that there's something to be said for at least dressing professional enough and making sure, like you said, that the stage is set and you almost have, you want to go into it thinking, and, and we'll, we'll talk about this in another video, Mike, but thinking from the perspective of what would I do if this were actually a one-on-one -on -one meeting? How, how do I, how can I recreate that experience that, you know, normally if, if we were face to face, we would be able to, to accomplish what, what can I do to recreate that and, and set right. the stage for that. And I, I think the more that you can create that familiar environment for people so that it can kind of feel like, all right, this is a professional business meeting, the the better off that that you're going to be in the long run. Yeah. And, and so earlier I was talking about, I had flipped my office around. Uh, well, what has happened is I, the whiteboard that used to be kind of sitting on the opposite side of the office from me is now behind me. And that, that's worked out well. Uh, there's been a, a handful of times where I will literally still write on the whiteboard behind me because, as you point out, it's visually in the scope of where my camera is shooting, and it feels very much like we're together, like I would be right on the whiteboard if we were together. Now, I'm not standing at it, and it's not you know me 10 feet away from them writing on it. It's literally like kind of right at my back. Uh, if you could imagine it right where the vase is here behind me now, uh, but I can actually put things on it um, and, and the other person can experience that if I, if I need to. So yes, there's, there's a lot of things I think you really want to think about in terms of how you put together your stage uh, and yeah. assemble your equipment. And the beauty of it is it's not super expensive because the quality of this stuff is coming up so rapidly. And at the same time, the expectations of the world on Zoom has kind of come down right. compared to the idea of having to come into the studios. Uh, those, uh, those advisors affiliated with USA Financial know that, you know, for years we've, we maintain, uh, you know, full audio and video studios inside of our building because of all the work we do to kind of bring your practice to life on your website and everywhere else with video and audio and podcasting and, and so on. Uh, and that's great. And there's still a place for that. But the everyday interactions, you don't have to have uh, that kind of studio quality. You just notch it up a, a bit and, and you will be head and shoulders above everyone else. Yeah. And like you said, Mike, I mean, you can spend a, a couple hundred bucks and get yourself a nice camera, a nice lighting and my, nice microphone, and you'll have a really 
good setup and be in a, a really good spot to be professional. And you do want to you you want to up the ante a little bit enough so that you sound good, you look good. Right. Um, and you know, I, I think that understanding that and really being sensitive to that sort of thing is is important. Um, so I I I I guess in in the end, probably the most important thing you can do is is get yourself the right equipment so that you are giving yourself that, that best first impression, especially with, with those prospective clients. And and the more you do it, the more you'll learn, you'll tweak things. I mean, I'll fall on the sword for you right now. I something about my skin complexion. I always look red on <laughs> video. And if you look like my hands don't look red, but my right. face looks red and yeah. it's something to do with my lighting and my camera. And I've messed around. Sometimes I can get a little better. Sometimes I can't, but you know, I'll get it eventually, but there's always just those little tweaks that you can do to make yeah. things better and better. One other thing too, I know a lot of people are using screen sharing, uh, especially if they're going through presentations or, you know, a, a potential proposal or, or something, try to be sensitive to the fact that, you know, the longer a screen sits there, static and you know isn't necessarily moving people can tend to all of a sudden lose their their interest like part of what makes some of the video conferencing work is there's still some of that movement and and that right. sort of thing so people will stay engaged the second you do a screen share and you pull up a a proposal be be cognizant to how long it's staying up there and if you can use some use one of the writing tools right. that you can kind of highlight over things and write over so it keeps some visual stimulation going on, on on the screen. I think that's a big tip for, for people is there they so they can be more sensitive to that and create a better user experience. Yep. Agreed. Great information, Mark. Uh, I know we're going to dive deeper on a lot more of the uh, the opportunities that lie out there in, yeah. in really the advancements that have taken place in 2020. If you had to find that silver lining in 2020 in dealing with the pandemic, it's sure. been uh, the fact that so many people, their game has been elevated when it comes to communicating through video and digitally, uh, that now much older clientele are open to this. So suddenly, you know, the 70 and 80 year old who didn't want to have a video conference when they were visiting Florida for the winter and you were back in some northern state, uh, now because they learned how to communicate with the grandkids throughout the pandemic, now they're open to doing the same with you. And so it's a huge advantage. Uh, you definitely want to take care of this. Mark and his team uh, are constantly staying at the cutting edge and helping advisors implement all this. So please reach out to us if you need some assistance in the meantime. Oh, go ahead. You look like you have something to say as I'm no, wrapping. No, no, no. You're right. Okay. Um, it's fun. This is, you know, you're you're 100% right that this is the silver lining. I, I we, we needed to be forced into this Yeah. because there are so many advisors that wanted to right. get here, but uh, I just, it was the path of less resistance and I'll just stay there. But being forced into this is a huge victory, I think. Yep. It's a strategic pie product for sure. So uh, again, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, this is the Rare Advisor. We're going to be continuing on with some of these subjects. I'm going to ask Mark to join us at least one more time here. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll be back with you soon. Thank you.